We're out here to share with the citizens of Bellevue some tips on how to drive in the ice and snow, um, some tips on how to prepare themselves for snow and ice events and other winter events, and to help them to understand what they can expect from us during ice and snow events. Well, Triple A and the City of Bellevue both play big roles when we do have snowstorms, and certainly Bellevue is very concerned about the safety of all of their citizens, and number one, they want to make people aware of just what's going to happen when the snows fall. So our main focus for this program is really to get us all to, to think just a little bit ahead. And we want to make sure, you know, before that storm comes, before the snow is actually falling from the sky, that we've taken a time to think about what options we have. Where are we going to drive when the snow comes? What routes are going to be the best for us? Am I ready? Do I know how to drive uh, on the snow? Is my car ready? And if I'm not comfortable with driving on the snow, it's okay to stay home. And I think that that's the message that both the City of Bellevue and AAA is trying to get out, that sometimes the safest place is to stay where you are so you're not contributing to the problem. One of the, the things that we always have to keep in mind when we're talking about planning for winter driving is maintaining our vehicle. When the weather gets cold, anything that's wrong with your car just becomes magnified and a battery that might work for you fine at 50 degrees won't have enough charging power for you at 30 degrees. So no matter what time of year it is, as we go into the winter, if you haven't had a chance to get your battery checked, your headlights checked, your, uh, your systems uh, really checked out by a trusted uh, automotive technician, it's a good thing to do. That's going to save you a lot of problems so you don't get stuck on the side of the roadway. I have a, like a little overnight bag that I just keep in the trunk along with my winter driving equipment so that I know if I get stuck I can go to a hotel or something that's close by and, and not be worried about that. I, I recommend that people always carry good warm walking shoes in their car, good warm jackets, you know, those kinds of things. Um, even for uh, during the summertime, earthquake preparedness kits are good. They should have some water and some food in their car. Um, the uh, the items that it would take for them to be comfortable while they're waiting for someone to come and help them. So if they do find themselves stranded, it's important that they be warm and comfortable. If you are out and you're caught in a snowstorm, there's two things that we all can do. The first thing, slow down. You cannot drive the same speed on ice, snow, wet roadways as you can on a, a dry pavement. So first of all, slow down. And second of all, be very aware of what's going on around you. Keep as much space, in fact, we talk about the safety bubble around your vehicle. Leave as much space as you can so if somebody does begin to skid, if your vehicle begins to skid, that you have a little bit of an opportunity to steer out of that situation without having a crash. Most cars now have anti-lock braking systems on them. Those are very different than the cars that some of us learned to drive on years ago, and the technique for using those brakes is very different. Used to be we were taught, pump your brakes, you know, just get a little bit of brake and pump and pump. That is absolutely the wrong thing to do with anti-lock brakes. You put on your brakes, and you will feel a pulsating um, feeling in that brake pedal but that means that those brakes are actually doing that pulsing for you at a rate of speed that you would never be able to mimic yourself. So anti-lock brakes, put the brakes down, let them do the, the braking for you. People have a tendency to think that uh, a four-wheel drive vehicle is, is bulletproof and, and you know it'll take them wherever they want to go. Sometimes that's not the case, especially going downhill. Four-wheel drive, ve drive vehicles have a tendency to um, skid just like any other vehicle, and if they haven't put their chains on, uh, they're likely to slide just like anyone else. If you are in an area where you know that there's lots of hills, be really cautious, have those chains ready, and know how to put them on your car. When the snow comes to any place in western Washington, the chances of you being able to call for a tow truck operator to come and put chains on your car is non-existent because those tow trucks have all been commandeered by the police agencies to take care of crashes and situations where people are in danger. First, in case you get stuck, you want to have some water and some food. I think mostly we're looking to give the citizens of, of this area an understanding of what to expect. And so the main goal is to give a clear picture of what to expect. If it snows, here are roads that will be cleared. Here are roads that will be cleared when we can get to them. 
when the ice and snow is predicted, we have to take equipment that was prepared for other tasks. We may be pouring concrete today and plowing snow with the same truck tonight. So there's a time period where we need to prepare by loading the plows and sanders onto the trucks. And for uh, response, we set our crews up into two 12-hour shifts, so we have 24-hour coverage. We have a map, and what we do is, is to um, make that available in advance to everyone so they know what the street priorities are. Um, and then we, we respond according to that map. We keep our 75% um, of our fleet on the, on the priority one route until they are completely clear. And the other 25% on neighborhood priority routes, which are designed to get the traffic off of the arterial streets into their neighborhoods so they're not blocking roadways down on the arterial. If residents are looking for more information, they can call 425-452-7840, which is our maintenance hotline. They can go to the website at www.bellevuewa.gov. If there's active weather in the forecast, they can click on the Extreme Weather Response button and it will tell them what preparations or activities are being done to respond to ice and snow. And on that website, they can click on the link to the ice and snow page, which will give them all the winter driving tips and maps that we have here tonight. So, you know, what we really are hoping uh, by sponsoring this kind of a program is that the citizens of this region will be better prepared and thus have a safer winter out there, that they'll be able to drive and feel comfortable, that, that they know that they will be able to get to their destination and come home safely.